All right, here we are again. Pre-trib rapture moment number 10 is where we're at. I want to talk to you today about the two witnesses of Revelation chapter 11. Who are they and what is their purpose? This is also very interesting and proves that the body of Christ will not be in the time of Jacob's trouble. Revelation chapter 11 verses 1 through 3 says, and there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. Verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, that they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. What's a thousand three score, or a thousand two hundred and three score days? It's twelve sixty, one thousand two hundred sixty. Now that is twelve sixty. If you divide it by three and a half years, it comes out to three hundred sixty days. The number of days on a Jewish calendar. Hmm. So God's not going by a Gentile calendar in that time period. Why? Because it's the time of Jacob's trouble. But let's continue here. Revelation chapter 11, verse 4. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. In other words, in the city of Jerusalem. That's where Jesus Christ was crucified. Verse 9, And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and in half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and in half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to the God of heaven. Very interesting story, that these two witnesses come back, and what are they doing? They are performing signs and wonders. Hmm. Very interesting signs and wonders too, I might add, considering the two men that actually are the ones that are doing this. We're going to see about who they are. Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 8 says, And after six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias. Elias being your New Testament word for Elijah. Talking with him. Verse 4, Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Hmm, very interesting. What were those, Moses and Elijah, what were they doing there on the earth? Well, at that point in time, the kingdom was being offered to the Jews. If they would have accepted Jesus as their Messiah, Moses and Elijah would have been back as the, those two witnesses. But when they rejected Jesus as their Messiah, Moses and Elijah, they were put off for another, not even sure how long, approximately 2,000 years or so their time of coming to prophesy for three and a half years to the Jewish people, that time was put off. Let me show you something else interesting here. Malachi chapter 4 verse 4 says, Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgment. 
Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So the two witnesses are very clearly Moses and Elijah. Why? And people say, oh, it's Enoch and Elijah. No, it's not Enoch. Enoch doesn't represent anything to the Jewish people other than just being in the genealogy. Okay? Moses represents the law. Elijah, the prophets. And you see it right there in Malachi chapter 4. All right? The law and the prophets. I did a whole study on this, the, the gospel of salvation and the tribulation. And in that study, I talk about the, the Orthodox Jewish people, the two men that they respect the most and revere the most, Moses and Elijah. So if the Lord wanted to confirm the word to the Jewish people, if he wanted to confirm the New Testament to the Jewish people, who would he choose? Would he choose Paul? No. They don't believe in what Paul wrote. Would he choose Peter? Would he choose John? No. He would choose the law and the prophets. And interestingly, if you remember what was said there in Revelation chapter 11, verse 5, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. What did Elijah do to the prophets of Baal? They had their sacrifice and they were there trying to you know, call down fire from heaven. Didn't work. And Elijah said, he prays to God, the fire comes down, devours everything. Hmm. You think Elijah might be able to do that again in the future through the power of the Lord? Yeah. Look what else. Verse 6, These have power to shut heaven that it rain not, and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Kind of like what Moses did in Egypt. Isn't that interesting? They're going to come back and they're going to show the Jewish people. They're going to come back and they're going to say, we are Moses and Elijah. And the Jews are going to go, yeah, right. Prove it. Okay. See these troops coming to stop us and shut us up? Fire come down out of heaven, devour them. Moses, hey, Jewish people, check this out. Takes his staff, touches the water, turns into blood. Why? Because the Jews require a sign. What's the time of Jacob's trouble? It's the time of Israel's trouble. Jacob and Israel are synonymous. God uses both names for the same man. Israel is Jacob. The time of Jacob's trouble, it's not the time of the church's trouble. So those two witnesses come back to confirm the word to the Jewish people. They wouldn't listen to me. They wouldn't listen to any other Bible believer. But they will listen to Moses and Elijah. Now, if the church, if the body of Christ is to go through this time period, or part of the time period, we'll say, and they're here for the first half. So you take some of the people, these, these pre-wrath people, you know, and they teach that the body of Christ goes through the first half. Well, what's the point of the two witnesses coming? Why do we need the two witnesses to come? We don't need to have the word confirmed to us with signs following. See? It doesn't make any sense. What's the point of the two witnesses if it's the body of Christ that's the center and focus of attention in the book of Revelation? It's not the body of Christ. The body of Christ has been removed. And now the Jews, God turns back to the nation of Israel. Right now God is saying, whosoever will, let him come. God is no respecter of person. There's neither Jew nor Gentile. You're all one in Christ Jesus. Come unto me. Anybody. But when the church leaves... God's attention turns back to the Jew. That's why the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. That's what the Bible talks about. And post-tribbers can't handle that. They cannot deal with the Scriptures. They can't stand the thought of God dealing with one nation and the worst nation of all for a lot of these people. And that's the nation of Israel. The Jewish people. Those people that they've learned to hate so much. They can't stand the thought of God dealing with those people exclusively and sending back two Jewish witnesses to witness to the Jewish people with signs and wonders. They can't stand the thought of it. One more proof that post-tribber belief, any, if, you, if you are believing that you go through any part of that time of Jacob's trouble, you have been deceived. The Bible teaches, the King James Bible teaches, a pre-tribulation rapture for the body of Christ. 
plain and simple.